Well, well. The only new folk I ever see in town are sublight runners from Fallbrook. But you don't look like one of Catherine's. What can I get you? If you don't see it, I don't got it. Don't go asking for the special reserve. Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. I'll note it next to the others, sir. Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest Saltuna and Halcyon. What can I do for you today? You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it, but if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. She's in the warehouse. But I'll warn you, Grim wore her patience thin a long time ago. Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well. I just spent most of my paycheck on Raptodon acid. Laws, no. Sometimes it's canid teeth. Or a mantis warm wings. Whatever Sebastian has in stock, really. So I can talk to him, of course. He doesn't get going about much else. Sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff. And some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. Would you? I'd appreciate that so much. Uh, maybe don't tell him I wanted you to ask. Just that you met this really nice lady named Celia, and she seemed... Oh, Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly. I'd better get back to work. He doesn't talk much, but he's got this quiet intensity, you know? Like there's stuff going on inside his head that you have no idea about. Plus, he's got great legs. It's hard to find a man who doesn't skimp on lower body exercises. You think that's what I'm looking for? <laughs> You're funny. Not in Stellar Bay. Everyone else who isn't taken either smells like Saltuna or they're my boss. Besides, a man with a good smile and a proportionate upper to lower body ratio isn't something to pass up. Not in Stellar Bay. Everyone else who isn't taken either smells like Saltuna or they're my boss. Besides, a man with a good smile and a proportionate upper to lower body ratio isn't something to pass up. Sorry, sometimes I get carried away. Well, new business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Celia, will you make a note of that for my self-review? Very generous. Noted. But not so generous I can't drive a good bargain. Now, who sent you? Rizzo's, perhaps? Or Auntie Cleo herself? The adjutant herself? Why, I knew the board would see reason eventually, but this... <laughs> this! Sir, you've prepared for this. Right. Now, see here. You may tell your corporate masters that we will deign to rejoin them on the board, but only once certain conditions are met. Why, we've got the numbers on our side. What more could we need? 
Though I take it from your appealingly gruff demeanor and blunt charm that you're not actually here to welcome us back to the board. Or purchase Saltuna. Oh, a shame. I'd been saving a bottle of iceberg aged whiskey for an occasion like this. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but it seems we're back to the drawing board. Because he's scared to go it alone. You need the board to hold your hand and tell you everything's going to be okay. Ain't that right? Surviving alone isn't as easy as it looks. Thanks to the so-called hazard clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. So-called is right. We've got our hazards, but we're still here, damn it. The board took off without so much as a thought for the folks left behind. That's the board's way. Doesn't matter if you're Monarch or the Groundbreaker. If the board can't control you, they'll find a way to punish you. Well, we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. You talk like Graham. Can't imagine why you'd sneer at the notion of a free colony. Could it be because you're an agent of the establishment? Monarch's a free planet, Felix. It's also fucked. I ain't a fan of the folks on the board, but if they could be wrangled to rebuild our roads, I'd welcome the help. Your friend makes a good point, young man. I used to be young and idealistic too, but you can't run a city on high-minded ideals. Indeed. Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. A lot of good that'll do. I'll just find another reason to turn tail and abandon you. Not if we secure the proper safeguards first. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit? then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. It's true, our Celia is an alarmingly competent middle manager. At any other company, she'd be wasted in data entry. The plan she refers to is a two-pronged approach, and the first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. Not long, but the devil is always in the details. And the salient detail here is a Bolt 52 cartridge. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. I was starting to get bored listening to you, until you said the phrase, extremely powerful ordinance. It is quite the rush. In the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in, these days it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Saying what which way? That's just what it's called. It's supposed to stand for something, but I forget what. Good enough. I know when to settle. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What can I do for you? Hiram? Why, he's probably still out at Devil's Peak. Not that he's had the courtesy to notify me, at any rate. You'd head south along the road and look for a mountain to the west. Not that I'd advise it. It's a terribly dangerous trek. But I see you've met Nioka. Anyone can get you there safely. It's her. He just wants me out of his bar. I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? He's not the brightest of minds, but he makes up for it with enthusiasm. That's not what I would call it. Still, I had him posted on the landing pad in hopes that he'd stay out of everyone's way. I'll see about additional training. Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. I've asked myself the same thing many times, especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. 
It's true, the board has treated us unfairly, but I'd always envisioned that things could be different. For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. But back then, it was known as Terra 1. Really? I always thought they were refreshingly straightforward names. After all, the whole point of terraforming was to make them Earth-like. Here, though, the results were mixed. That ain't fair. They didn't leave on account of the hazards. They left on account of their cowardice. The hazards just gave them a reason to put to paper. Sharp as ever, Nyoka. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. That's also what I thought. Oh, we were young and bold then. Not unlike yourself. We saw the chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. It's humane, but it's also good business sense. Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. Anyway, we learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out, creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. Hmm? Oh, well, there were surely other junior executives with more open minds, though none of them had the temperament to handle the paperwork. But I was keeping my tone flat and maintaining eye contact. You weren't supposed to notice I was avoiding the subject. This is why you've never been good with presentations, sir. <sighs> Very well. Many, many years ago, Graham Bryant and I used to be collaborators of sorts. Graham Bryant. He leads a group of extremists out in Amber Heights. But he used to be as much a part of the corporate machinery as any of us. Much as he likes to forget it. Indeed, for all the good it did. MSI's then leadership wasn't enthusiastic. They insisted we be relocating to Terra 2, along with everyone else. In a manner of speaking, many of us stayed behind, in an act of quiet but firm defiance. As the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. I moved forward with our planned reforms, as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. I don't think I realized how far they'd stoop. Everything we did was legal and above board. We followed their rules, and yet they still found reasons to declare us outlaws. Your first mistake was expecting the board to cut you a fair deal. I understand the sentiment, but if we can't rely on some sort of framework, then what do we have? I do think there's something useful in a governing body like the board. Something that keeps us from anarchy, but I dearly wish it functioned differently. Why wouldn't anyone? They own nearly all the resources and infrastructure in Halcyon. Yeah, and once you go back to him, he'll own your dignity, too. Yeah, that'd go a long way toward rebuilding our homes. To be on the board is to be part of the colonial community, and being cut off means slow strangulation. I'm not a man to put pride before progress. If membership on the board can ease our hardships and provide us with opportunities, then that's the path I mean to pursue. Besides, I'm hopeful that additional leverage on our part will allow us a more equitable relationship. I've discovered it's much easier to negotiate from a position of power. And I don't mean to leave MSI or its people at a disadvantage. My hope is to maintain the reforms we've managed here. And who knows? Perhaps once we're restored, we could spread them to other corporations. It's straight bullshit is what it is. A fabrication rich folks use to preserve their investments by leaving a lot of people here to die slow. Nyoka has the right of it. It's a legal provision that gives the board the authority to cordon off any planet or location that it deems dangerous. Sounds like the board gave themselves the power to arrest an entire planet. They would say it's for the greater good. 
Monarch may be dangerous, but it's hardly the wasteland the board describes it to be. Whatever the board's goals, the greater good has little part in them. He and his followers call themselves the Iconoclasts. Lawless anarchists, all of them. If anyone on Monarch deserves the reputation the board's pinned on us, it's them. A chance! They've been doing this for years, and I... Well, let's just say I know enough about Graham to be confident that he won't change. It isn't just that they drain our people and resources. Every radical act they commit cements Halcyon's image of us all as destructive rebels and pushes us further from the rest of the colony. So, what's the downside? Shall I begin with the supply shortages or the subtle but constant threat of annihilation? He's lucky the board doesn't take him seriously enough to keep more than a few UDL gunships patrolling Monarch. An Earth Directorate assault cruiser would change his tune. It's almost a shame we haven't seen one around Monarch in a long while. As far as I'm concerned, the less said about Graham, the better. Graham seemed like a reasonable man years ago. and We both agreed that MSI's treatment of its workers was untenable. I thought reforms would be enough. I didn't realize you wanted to abolish the corporate system entirely. What can I do for you? Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? Or maybe some canid toenails? You look like a woman who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts. Sebastian, you ever get your hands on those pheromone sacks? Manipillers ain't gonna hunt themselves, you know. I must have hunted a dozen. But I couldn't find a single sack on any of them. I must be looking in the wrong place. <laughs> Manipillers ain't got pheromone sacks. I just told him that so he'd stop asking me for advice. At least I'm getting a good haul of claws in the process. You're in good hands, traveling with Monarch's top merc. Still, if you want any rap glands or manti claws, I've got you covered. I don't know. Celia usually buys whatever I have, and Mr. Pickett seemed real interested. So I thought maybe I was onto something. He came to Stellar Bay years ago, just before the board cut us off. Ended up stuck here. He was always real interested in our monsters. Manta Queens, especially. I kept telling him he was a fool for chasing Manta Queen tail. Anyone looking to get familiar with a queen is liable to become the bitch's supper. Oh my. Well, I hope he's all right. Haven't seen him in a while. Sure, they're real big. Hard to miss him. Who wouldn't be? Now that just sounds like a fancy way to say boring people. Well, I could send you to the same place I sent Mr. Pickett, but I haven't seen him in a few weeks. To tell true, I'm starting to get a bit worried about him. Tell you what, I'll tell you where I sent Mr. Pickett if you promise to look for him. Help him out if he's got himself in trouble. Fair deal? All right then, leave town through the southern gate, the one right here, and head past the abandoned ruins. Past the ruins? That's Manta territory, all right. My professional opinion is that we leave that idiot to his well-deserved fate. Last Manta Queen I saw was in the wilds out that -a ways Could be Mr. Pickett still out there too. Huh, I haven't seen her in a few days, but I've been meaning to ask her how that raptid on acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. 
Nice of you to say. I like her too. And I gotta admire anyone with her passion for canid hides. But you don't have to butter me up. Wait, I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? Don't get me wrong. I'd like to give her a discount. She's a real fine lady. Always talks nice and slow, so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit on account of no one else having any use for raptodon tongues. Nuh-uh. A lot of people think I'm not too bright, but you're not fooling me. I know she can't get these goods anywhere else. Come on, that's crazy. No one would do that. You sound pretty sure. And she is awful nice. Okay, I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. Maybe to Chef Raymond's. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? Okay, but how did he say it? Did he sound excited? Or like he was just agreeing to it? Was he like, yay, a date with Celia. I've secretly been waiting for this. Or was it more, sure, I don't have anything else going on. Not to worry. If I never buy another Raptodon tongue, it'll be too soon. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do, and Mr. Nandi's giving me that back-to-work look. Anyhow, thank you. I think I'm gonna be sick. No! I just stepped in a dead man's blood. And I think one of the flies landed on my mouth. If you're going into the apartments, do not go into the lower one on the right. That's where the body is. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go contemplate a hot shower. Murder? Hey, is this the part where we go hunting for clues? Even Stella Bay ain't safe these days. What's the world coming to? Thank <laughs> you. 
Whatever you do, don't mention Tossball to Kaiser. You'll never hear the end of it. You know, I haven't seen him in a while. If you got him stuck in an hour-long rant about mostly colonists, you'd be thankful.
wouldn't mind smelling like salt tuna if we could sell more of it. Hey, Velma, I got your caffeinoid pills. You're a lifesaver. Hope Abigail didn't give you a hard time. Just the usual. Any word on Braxton? Nothing. Don't know how much longer I can cover for him either. Give me those pills, will you? Here you go. You know, you might consider a real night's sleep instead. How'd you do that? Look, you can tell Catherine the new shipment will be ready when it's ready, all right? She's welcome to come up here and pack boxes herself if she's in such a hurry. Did she now? Well, I can see I was mistaken. Because if Catherine really had sent you, there'd be a lot more expletives in your message. I hope you can forgive my temper. This job has been running me ragged lately. First, my autoloader foreman stages a walkout, and now my chief pescatological health manager is missing. Braxton. He's in charge of getting the fish fat, but also making sure they don't get too many tumors. 
He's a real wizard with pharmaceuticals, but he has creative notions of working hours. Comes with living in a free colony, I guess. We're not keen on rules for rules sake around here. Means Braxton skips work sometimes, but it also means no company boss is telling me when I can take a shit. These MSI types are living the dream. Since you don't seem to be constrained yourself, maybe you could check up on him. He lives in the apartments. Tell him Velma said to get his lazy ass down here, or she might start noticing those extra drugs he's been taking from supply. Something else on your mind? Stealing such a nasty word. Let's call it skimming. And yeah, let's just say I've noticed the sterile biotics we used for the fish would get used a little faster on Braxton's shifts. Someone would have if this were a corporate town, but we pride ourselves on giving people a little breathing room. Besides, the Spacer's Choice stuff we use is cheap enough. And Braxton knows how to get the salt tuna, fat and mostly tumor free. Caleb Herrick runs the autoloader operators. He thinks I don't pay them enough for flipping switches and turning dials. He and his whole crew walked out. Say they won't come back unless I pay them more. Because we've got a budget, all right? And in case you haven't noticed, MSI doesn't exactly have a lot of spare bits on hand. Not on Monarch. Sanjar threw out the old work mandates and penalties. Sure, until your workers start making ridiculous demands. You mind slapping him around a little while you're at it? I'm joking, mostly. Unless you can do it without hurting his job performance. If you can find a way to get him back to work, I'll make it worth your while. Check the Yacht Club, he's usually there. Unless you're here to tell me he's agreed to do his job again, I've got nothing to say. I don't have the bits for it, plain and simple. Besides, if I make an exception for him, I gotta do the same for everyone. Hard workers? They turn dials and flip switches. The machines do all the actual work. Caleb and his crew have it better than anyone else around here, I'll tell you that much. If Caleb wants to keep this job, he'd better get back to it. I'm about ready to hire sublight contractors at this rate. Maybe so, but I bet you Caleb runs out of bits first. Then he'll have to come back. He says he's got a stash to tide his crew over. Could be he's all talk, but if the money's real, I bet you he keeps it at home, near the diner. For running me ragged while he takes an extended leave at the bar? Not on your life. Fine by me. Sublight boss out of Fallbrook. Handles most goods that come in or out of Stellar Bay. Has a mouth like a ground six spacer. This again? I swear, this is the last time I contract for any special requests. You can tell Grimm his poster came in. You can also tell him I got a better offer for it. So now it's going to Nell. That about cover it? She runs the bedding parlor across the way. Nice professional lady. She asked me about the poster once. Just once. Made a real generous offer, too. I don't have time for Grimm, even when I'm not working doubles. It's staying locked up in my office until Nell shows with her money. No. I paid Sublight for it. So, it's mine. And when Nell pays me for it, it'll be hers. Grimm may have asked for the poster, but it's not his until I take his money. Sure can, if you want to pay me more than Nell's offering. Sure, and once you finish helping me, then we can talk about the poster. Fine by me.
smells like wrapped in here. Oh, it does work. I bought some musk from Sebastian to cover up the saltina smell. Trust me, this is worse. You're the new face. Wow, you must be up on all the latest tossball games. So who do you follow? Wait, don't tell me. You look like a Hammersmith Thunder fan. No, Glacial H Mammoths. The Darlings? <laughs> Seriously? I mean, uh, yeah, you're looking at the Darlings' newest recruit. Boss is a shoe in for Rookie the Quarter. I'd heard they'd gotten a new hacker. Is that why everyone's making such a fuss about you? But what are you doing on Monarch? Ha! <laughs> Maybe we're not so isolated as I thought. You get to listen to games all day? Stellar Bay really is a paradise. It's pretty swell, but it's a whole lot better with company. Say, I don't think I've seen you before, and I'd remember that face. I'll try not to be a stranger then. My name's Felix, by the way. You should stop by more often. The games are always better when you've got someone to celebrate with. Sounds like a good time. I wouldn't mind bringing a couple drinks and settling in for the pennant match. Look at me, getting carried away again. So, what can I do for you? Graham's always filling the airwaves with this propaganda. Like it's done him any good. All it means is the tossball games get to us in fragments. Makes him real hard to watch. Signed by the Black Hole himself. There's no way I could pass that up. Why, did you want to see it? I don't have it yet. I'm waiting on a few customers to pay up before I can give Velma the bits. You mean Dopey Landing Pad Grimm? I didn't know he and Mr. Nandi were friends. I guess that changes things. Fine. Tell Velma that I don't want the poster anymore. I'll find something else to hang in my shop. Poor Isaac. I was wondering why I hadn't seen him in a few days. I'd really like to help. Isaac was a sweet fellow, even if he did have terrible teeth. They were pretty distinct. Monarch doesn't exactly have a thriving dental industry, and Isaac seemed to get stuck in all sorts of bad habits dietary and otherwise. Sometimes he'd drink Purpleberry Punch by the leader, other times he'd keep betting on a losing team, started owing the wrong people money. I don't know for sure, but I saw Elijah and his buddies pushing Isaac around. They're hooligans from Fallbrook. They sweep into town, drop supplies off behind the warehouse, and spend the rest of their stay getting rowdy over tossball games. They usually loiter in the alley behind the yacht club, they're not allowed in the bar anymore. I bet you anything Isaac ran into trouble with one of them. Good. Someone's gotta. Mr. Sanjar will be pleased to hear about it when you're done. I know he gets fed up with the Fallbrook bullies, but there's not much he can do.
I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts. Who spat in your spirits, Velma? You notice my mood? I'm surprised you can see straight today. I could be seeing triple and I'd still think you're being unkind. I just might find it funnier. Will you try wrangling half a ton of dead fish with decades old equipment and see what it does for your disposition? Anyway, what do you folks need? Sure can, if you want to pay me more than Nell's offering. I got a feeling you and Catherine would get on like tumors on a pig. Take the poster then. And if I never hear another word about it, it'll be too soon. Something else on your mind? Have you had time to check on that poster yet? I keep wondering if it's come in. Sorry, I just get so excited and I always feel like I miss everything that happens in town while I'm up here. Would you look at that? The Rizzo's logo is nice and bright and you can still smell the ink on Mr. Holcomb's signature. I can't thank you enough. Still, you can have the bits I was gonna spend at the bar this week. And you know what? Take my old toss ball blocker too. Never get the chance to use it these days. what goes on in a marauder's head? No, they're crazy. But they still manage to feed themselves, dress themselves, work together. Gotta be something of that. All I need to know is that they're on the other side of that wall. I'm sure someone said the same thing in Amber Heights. I gotta find a new drinking buddy. I hear you're into Graham's philosophist hogwash, Felix. Yeah, if by philosophist hogwash you mean the virtues of enlightened anarchy. Organization separates us from the animals. You ever seen a rap delay plumbing? You see sprats running around building roads? Maybe the folks we have at the top ain't exactly leadership material, but if we tore the whole thing down, we'd be kings and queens of a wasteland. Uh, correction? Kings and queens of an awesome wasteland. I'll take toilets over freedom any day of the week. Who the fuck are you? This ain't your alley. Hey, what are you doing here? This is our secret alley. Berta already pissed by those crates to market. Listen, that purple tooth twerp had it coming. Not that anyone has proof. And not that it's any of your business. Oh yeah? What are you saying exactly? Wow, most of the pencil pushers around here cave as soon as you look at them funny. Fine, we're going. This ain't worth it.
Well, I see you've had a sobering effect on our friend Nyoka. Sir, please stop. Forgive me, Celia. I couldn't help myself. Anyway, what can I do for you? But that's terrible. What happened? I'm glad to hear you've dealt with them. They've been causing quite a bit of trouble around town. I've been consumed with other matters of late, but I would have dealt with them. Eventually. Of course I would have. Still, your intervention in the matter is much appreciated. Please consider this payment for your services. <laughs> <laughs>